Um, also fun, I think, and so important. So we talked about different places online where you can sell. And there's more that I'm mentioning. There's, there's more um, handmade for sale type places. Um, we went the Etsy route to a website. Okay, there's two things that we did that I feel like made our business explode. So you have to think, I've, in a year, I went from my attic, I mean basically a year, a year and a half, to 3,000 square feet and five employees. The first thing was YouTube. In the beginning, I was very guarded about how I was making things because I was selling on Etsy and other people were making things and yeah, I always wanted to have the edge and I wanted my things to be better than their things. But then I was like, I can't, that, that's going to die with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I got to, I can make more money, I can enjoy myself, I can meet more people, I can, if I share. So it's not totally, um, you know, people are like, oh, thank you so much, you're so generous. And I am, but it's, you know, I was, I was thinking about my business and about um, and about my livelihood as well. So what we did was we made um, YouTube tutorials. And I said, do you want to learn how to needle felt? This is what you need. This is how you do it. This is how you get started. This is how you use this tool. We even have a video for how to fill your stab at Wabbit, which is pretty, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, did you bring Milo? He's here. OK. <laughs> um, so, YouTube, people go there. People spend hours on YouTube. I get people writing me saying, I stayed up until 3 a.m. watching on YouTube. Are you crazy? Um, and I say thank you. And um, so, it's, it's a really, really powerful tool. So if you have something, even if you're not gonna show how to, uh, how to make it, how to use it, or, um, I don't know, like I can think of other, um, other business, maybe, yeah, yeah. So, from people watching your YouTube tutorials, does that turn into people who are buying your finished products, or people who are buying your pieces so they can watch the tutorial and make it? Yeah, um, probably more the latter, because what we mostly do on YouTube is teach how to make something. So, for example, like I said, in the old days, when Talbot helped me, we made a paper kit. Waste of paper, waste of time. I mean, every time we ran out of kits, we had to print more, you know, of like 12 pages. I'm totally ridiculous. So now we have a YouTube video called Land How to Legal Belt, Land, and Sheep. And in the video, I've got my clothing service, and I've got my needles, and I've got my kit, and I've got um, our little dog, Milo. Yeah, yeah Milo. <laughs> You gotta give them the whole experience, especially if we're gonna show the video later. I have this little dog named Milo. This, this, and um, I got it right before Christmas. And I was, I was watching the Muppets, and I was looking at Milo, and Milo was really funny looking. And I thought, I've got to make, I've got to make Milo. Seriously, funny looking. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks. Buddy. And I said to Kyla, "Good news, you're gonna be Milo. <laughs> Start working on a voice." And just as fate would have it, she said, I love the Muppets. I, grew, I just, I've always wanted to be a puppeteer. <laughs> and so Milo's in our video. Now every once in a while we get some Milo hate mail. We just, we just burn it and move on. Um, so, okay, needle felting kit. Okay, so then I open it up and I say, this is what's in your kit, and I start showing how to do it. I say, if you want to make your sheep and lamb, you can buy this kit at Serafina Fiber Art. Likewise, on our website is a link to our YouTube tutorial. So people are, people go on YouTube and type in how to, dot, dot, I mean anything. I, go, I YouTube searched how to speak in public before I came this evening, um, because I've never done it. <laughs> And um, it said to practice, and it did not go well. So I, I just, this is my practice. Um, 
Okay, what was my point? YouTube, so that was one of the things that we did. So someone watches your video. Maybe they share a link. You make another video. Just start making videos. Okay, so let's say you, I just keep going back to cleaning. Let's say you clean, you have a cleaning service. You can build interest and <clears throat> establish yourself as, that was part of what I wanted to do was establish myself as the expert, you know? And I felt that I could do that because I, I taught myself. I mean, I figured a lot of this stuff out. All of it. So um, let's say you have a cleaning service. You could, maybe you're funny. Maybe um, you live in a beautiful area and it's visually interesting. I don't know, but something about your YouTube video sets you apart from other people. And you start giving these cleaning tips, you know, like you got wine on your carpet. This is how you, this is how you clean it up, or whatever. But what happens is, even though you think, okay, well, how does a person in China help my local business? It does. It translates. It. You. I don't know how to. I don't know how to explain how that works, <laughs> but. Yeah, yeah, I was looking up Google that. Um, we have people travel to us. Now, someone's not going to travel or like pay you to fly out to clean their house. Well, I don't know, maybe, if you're that good. But um, it reaches far and wide, but it also will affect you locally if your business is on the local. I, I truly believe that. I wish I had more facts for you on that, but I don't. Um, the other thing that we did. Okay, so YouTube is snowballing. We're like, wow, we have a lot of views. We have, you know, 500 subscribers. We now have something like 12,000 subscribers and millions of views. And we keep making more videos. And someone Google's how to meet a belt box, and they find us, or or they go to our website, they see our kits, they see the link, they watch it there. Um, the other thing that we did was use Facebook. Now, Facebook is a, for most people, love-hate relationship. Um, but it is very useful. Create a business page. So this is different from your personal page. It has your logo. It has, you know, maybe your logo is the cover page photo and your, and your what's the little thing called? Your profile picture is your face. Um, on mine, um, I'll show you. You took a picture, right? Oh, trouble. Oh. Oh, that's, my, that's, my, that's my people. <laughs> um, so, personal page, uh, business page. Thank you, sorry. I was trying not to let it go back to your personal page. Um, that's our website. This is our Etsy shop. See the consistency? Um, this green paper that is my background on my business card, um, our logo, our website, and our Etsy shop. I still have that green paper. I made that green paper like eight years ago, and thank goodness it's holding up well. It's also the background for my, um, a lot of my photographs. Uh, the ones taken on the wood were taken at the mill. Um, so that was a place where I took photos. I'm going to talk about photographs. There it is. All right, so this is my professional Facebook page. People like it. They go and they click. But don't pay, this is my two cents, don't pay Facebook for page likes. They're going to try to get you to pay them for page likes. It's, it's, it's inauthentic. Um, you can read about it online, do your own research, but I find that you're not really getting interested in people. So um, don't, okay, this is, this is again, this is my two cents, this is my Facebook etiquette. Don't ask people to like your page or share your page. Put, put your stuff out there. Make it heartfelt, make it beautiful, make it your company culture, and they will respond. Um, I mean, if you've got an event, and I'll say Regina, I just use your, 
But I mean, it just, it's a, I feel like, again, it's like, you want to be, you want people to come to you because they want to. You know what I mean? Because you've drawn them in. Um, so you will build, you post interesting things, post a behind the scenes look at what you're working on, or um, maybe it's not so great. Maybe you had, I have this one picture of this orangutan that I made, and his, it, the armature broke, and his arm fell off, and he's like this big. And it just so happened that where I was on making his face, he just had his eyeballs, but not his eyelids yet. So he's like this, and he's like holding his own arm. <laughs> it's very scary. That he's in the water. But, um, you know. Now we're all going to go. It's fun. <laughs> so this is a place for you to engage people. This is what I'm working on. This is how you do this. Look at this neat thing I found. Marsha, who works for me, um, is amazing at this. She takes beautiful photographs. <coughs> she uses Instagram a lot, maybe. Um, she is all over social media. I, I can't, she's always giving me more ideas. I'm like, I can't handle it. Um, okay, but that's not the second big thing. First big thing was YouTube. The second big thing was we had people sending me messages to this. Um, page, look what I made. And I was always like, okay, now I've got to take these photos, <clears throat> I've got to share them, say something nice about them. Because I didn't want people, or I would respond to them, I didn't want them to think that I didn't appreciate them sending me stuff, because I did. But it was a lot of work to, I was like, okay, look what so and so made, because I, I had to, then I had to share it. So we decided to create a Facebook group. So this is, if you don't like it, you join it. And I'm sorry if I'm telling you stuff right now. This, so we have a closed group. It's called Serafina Felting Fanfare. And people who are making my kits, or who are needle felting, can join the group and share their work. So this has been phenomenal. We have a community of, how many people? Almost 2,000 people based around our business. And we can we can poll them, we can introduce new products to them, we can ask them what they, they want next. Um, they can post what they're making, they can share ideas, they can share failures, um, you know, they can ask questions. If I can't answer it, some other knowledgeable needle collector can answer it. It's been incredible. Now it has rules. Um, other people can't share things for sale on this page. It's not what it's for. There's other groups for that. Um, if you decide to start a group, <clears throat> make sure that you establish from the beginning what you want that group to be. Does, do you guys use Facebook groups? Is anybody a part of Facebook groups? Yeah? What group are you thinking about? What group are you part of? Well, it's actually. Uh it's for um, people that are uh, wanting to, uh, I'll say it's a Craigslist for pets and pet supplies. Oh, okay. Um, so if, you, if you belong to a few different groups on Facebook, um, it's important to know where you are, what the group rules are. Um, but this has just been a huge, huge tool for us. Uh, Marcia made, Marcia, did Marcia make this in it? I think so. So I changed the group photo, like I'll, um, where it says change group photo, I can click on that and it'll show me all the recent posts on the page and I can pick, you know, pick from people's photos. Anyway, okay, so that was a really big, um, big step for our business in engaging people. I can post things for sale. <laughs> That's the key. I can be like, look what we just came out with, or look at our brand new video, or whatever. Okay. All right. One <laughs> second. Let me make sure I'm doing fair page, special page, group page, going into groups. Pinterest. Uh, just kidding. I was on Pinterest, and Marsha, uh, social media queen, said you need a business Pinterest page. So we opened that. I'm still learning about that, um, but Pinterest is a really big 
place where people go for ideas and inspiration. So that is an important one. Um, I am on Twitter and Instagram. I don't use it as much as I should. There's also something called Periscope, um, which is through Twitter, which is a, um, a live video app. So it's on your phone. You can record live. And people who follow you will get a little ping so they know that you're live. And they can tune right in. And if they miss it, they have 24 hours um, to, get, to see it. And then it just goes away. It's kind of neat. Uh, uh, email. So in the old days, I would um, write a letter, write a newsletter, and um, mail it with like stamps and addresses. Oh, the, oh my gosh! Trying to integrate. Do you remember like with the with the labels and trying to merge files? And now we just email people. <laughs> so if you go to a show. Um, or like this evening, I probably should have had my um, book out. Start collecting emails. Ask people, tell them why. Um, develop an email list. You can use MailChimp, um, Constant Contact, Campaigner. Is there any other ones that you guys use? MailChimp. Use MailChimp. We use MailChimp. Yeah. And it just lets, lets you, gives you a format to design a nice looking newsletter with pictures and text, you know, and then you send it out to your mailing list. It's a good way to invite people to shows, let them know what's new. Okay. Um, pricing. I don't think I have any pictures for this. We have a, we have a slide. We have a blog. Slide. Well, the okay, blog. Okay, okay. Oh, because I was going to talk about my blog. That's another social media tool. Um, if you've got something to say, you can blog about it. So I have a lot to say, but I don't get to blog too much because it takes time. You've got to concentrate, sit down, make sure it's well written, um, try to include some photographs. This is our blog. It's called Heartfelt Fun. It's actually kind of like our tagline is Heartfelt Fun. Um, so logo, banner. This is a blog post about pricing, uh, so I think um, it's pretty informative. I wrote down the I wrote down the link. You can't click on it because it's hard. <laughs> but I wrote it down. Um, people have a lot of formulas for pricing things. It's like materials and time times two. <laughs> no way. Um, I think it comes down to demand. I think it comes down to how many people know about my product or service and how much can I sell it for. Um, with artwork, I ended up with paintings, I ended up developing a price per square inch. It just, it, it, it didn't have a formula other than the price per square inch, but painting materials and supplies relative to the cost of the finished fine art is very, very small. And it's the same with needle felting. Um, this is about an ounce of wool, which cost me a dollar. Um, you guys felt how, like, they were, where did all those printers end up? I collected them back. Okay. <laughs> um, it's, it's not about the materials with what I do. It's about the time invested in, you know, what it took me, uh, the time it took me to learn how to do it. Um, and the time it took me to actually make the item and, and talent to a degree. So I started out making little bunnies. They're a little smaller than this, and I think I started them at I don't know, it was 48 or. Um, and I couldn't make enough anymore. They were selling faster than I could make them. So I was like, well, I, I better raise my prices. <clears throat> so I might sell a couple of less. Because someone's like, well, I'm not paying fifty-eight dollars for that. But the demand was such that you know five other people were waiting in line to do that, and so I could I could raise my prices. And then the more I made, the better I branded. The more I was visible on social media, the more and more the value and the demand went up, so I could charge more. Um, so in the blog. 
I talk about pricing pretty, I feel like that's a better, uh, <laughs> gonna be a better explanation than I can give right now. Um, start low and work up. It's better to build up, up, up than to be like, I want, you know, $125 for this. Oops, it's not selling. I better make it 85. Oh, uh, it's still not selling. <laughs> I mean, every once in a while, because what I'm doing is all one of a kind, I'm going to have something that doesn't sell. It's okay. I don't, it's all right. If you're doing production where you're making, you know, little wooden trains, um, and you, you know, you're making 50 of those for a holiday season, um, it, you're going to have more consistency uh, in your pricing and sell. But uh, just, just work up. Work your way up. See what other people are selling like products for, I'm sure, with the soap, you probably looked around, and you don't want to, you know, be like, well, I really want $9 for a bar of soap when really people are paying the six or whatever. No, okay, <laughs> that's a good point, okay. Everyone's like, not everyone. A lot of times people underprice something that they've made. And the thing is, people in general feel that some people are just very frugal, like Kyla. <laughs> so I wouldn't pay twenty dollars for that. But people like me, you you want to feel that what you've purchased is special and has value, and you you might spend a little more on something because it makes you feel that much more. I don't know if the right word. But do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, this is a valuable thing. This is worth it. I like this. I'm going to treat myself to this. I'm going to give this to somebody else um, as a gift. So, um, <clears throat> don't under... Yeah. I said build up. But don't underprice either. Um, you can't... A lot of craft people, I think, get into this bind of... Um, I don't think I can get more than this for what I'm making, <clears throat> but they're paying themselves, it comes down to they're paying themselves $2 an hour. Well, you can't make a living like that. You've either got to stop making that and make something else or charge more for it. Pay, pay attention to your, your bottom line um, or else you're just crafting <laughs> and slapping your stuff around to show. Um, Okay, so we're talking about pricing, demand, consider cost and time. Um, as, as I wrote down here, as much as it's your job to sell your product, it's your job to create demand. So, and I'm not talking about like making stuff up. Um, I'm talking about letting people know that you exist, communicating the value of what you're doing or your product, um, you know, making it funny. That's a part of your job, and that's where the social media um, and branding really come in. There are some amazingly talented artists that, you know, they don't promote. So, I mean, you know what I mean? And then there's some people who aren't creating something that's super amazing, but they can market the heck out of it. So, it's all a balancing, balancing act. Um, okay, so photographs, so important, especially if you're using the internet. It's not that hard to take a good picture of something. Um, a decent camera is a good idea. Now phones are getting better and better, and some people take better pictures with their phones than I take um, with my good camera. Um, these are some of our products. And this is the way they look on our website. Again, I use the green paper a lot. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about technical aspects of photographs, but what works best is natural light um, next to a window. If the sun is shining straight through the window, you need to hang some tissue paper or something just to filter it a little bit because you want it soft. Um, if you have a more modern look, you might create a light box where everything around your product is white. That's a good a good way to go. You can, you can learn about that on the internet. Um, 
but nothing turns me off faster than like a blurry picture of a product. It's just such a waste. Of, it's a bad message. It's you know, pay attention, take your time, get good photographs. So important. I have some pictures of my early work. Um, these are from 2010. This is when I was in the attic and it had a window to the left. So you can see how the light is coming across. And then um, this is recent work at our shop now. Um, so. Yeah, please take time uh, to get good images. Make sure that the images represent tie in with the company culture. Like I've got the paper or the barn wood. Um, if it's contemporary, like I said, it could be white. Find a good background. Try to eliminate um, a hard edge. So like if I were taking a picture of Little Red and her wolf, and this were my surface, and there were a wall here, do something to soften this line. It's really distracting to have that corner um, visually like if there were a line going straight across right there, I think it would be really distracting. So the paper is great because it just, it just bends. So people use fabric. I think fabric can get a little messy looking. Um, uh, when I was using the barn wood, I think I have a picture of products on the barn. When I was at the mill and I was using the barn, I would try to put something, oh, like the chipmunk there. Oops, sorry, I pushed back. Um, I, I had this log that that little blank chipmunk was standing on, and that softened that deep corner that was back there. Any questions about photography? Yeah. What size is photo do you find it works better than the photo? I haven't been paying too much attention. I think I have my camera set to a higher quality or resolution. I have like a Nikon um, D50. The website will often want it at a certain larger size and then that way it allows for like the zooming in and most, most of the time it will resize it the way that it needs it. So I, I would suggest taking a nice big image and then you can always crop it down. Am I supposed to finish at eight? Well, we'll open yeah. till nine. Okay. So maybe um, nine. Is okay. Ultimate okay. Let me tell you guys what um, is left on my list. Um, we can talk about photography for another minute. But um, I was going to talk a little bit about um, ways to find help and grow that way? Is that something that you guys want to hear a little bit about? Okay. Um, what, did we answer? Like, I feel like by the time I've taken the picture and it goes to my computer, sometimes, usually it goes right to the website, sometimes the email to Kyla. So it goes through all these different digital changes. So I'm really not sure what size. I just didn't know. Because the thing is with your camera is running on 3500, and I didn't know if you're using that size, how quickly you're loading on your website. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Yeah. Um, so, I haven't noticed anything. Um, at one point, we were being, Volusion charges by, we were worried about the photo size because they charge the based on bandwidth usage, mm -hmm. and. So that might be. Yeah. The photograph. Yes, yeah. and then exactly. some websites will want you to use an external source to host your images, so it kind of depends on um, who's hosting the site. So, um, all right, I'm going uh, to switch subjects to um, you're ma you've got your Etsy shop, you're making things, or you've got your business, and you need help. Um, I met Kyla, like I said, through our kids. Um, I met Jennifer, who was our, my second employee through our kids at our Kung Fu school. Um, I, I take Kung Fu and her son takes Kung Fu. So we were all, our kids are almost, we each have two kids, they're almost all the same age.
We were all women ready to get back into the workforce, basically, after raising our kids enough. <laughs> um, they're good now. So that's a good, that's actually a good resource, a good way to go. Is, um, and I don't know how you're going to meet these women if you're not <laughs> talking, uh, generally talking to school age moms, but, um, you know, just networking, pulling people in that you know. So far, I haven't hired anybody that I didn't know already. I haven't conducted, like, interviews and put ads in the paper and stuff like that. The book, um, that small business book that I mentioned, and there's another one, a retail, um, there's a couple of really good retail books. They, they don't talk about that, how to hire, how to interview. Um, but everybody has their own personality and their own talents. And when you do hire someone, whether it's a friend or um, you know someone that came to an interview, put them to work in tasks that suit them. Um, Kyla, I met because of videos. She loved, like when we, she was making this, she's like, I just love, you know, um, what was her name, making pretty things. Yeah. <laughs> like she loves this stuff, and that works great for me, because uh, I don't not like it, I just, I don't love it. I love other things. I love, you know, making products and figuring out how to do stuff. So um, Talbot is an introvert, very soft-spoken, but super smart, um, also tech. Now he surprised me because he's amazing with customers. And as a quiet person, I thought, oh, he's going to really struggle talking to people. But he's also, I'm sure I see He's also very thorough, very um, careful, and very thoughtful. So when someone calls, We'll talk to them on the phone for 45 minutes if they need to, and he'll answer all their questions. Um, and you know, he's just he's very good at that, and that surprised me actually. Um, but he does shipping. He makes um, we have a product called um, U Smooth and Bunny Butter, and they're little formulated um, little bombs. Basically, they get poured into a mold. Um, he's really good at that. Took the measure and. Um, so he's really good at that. Now, I wouldn't ask him to dye pearls. It's too, um, it's too random. It's too, you know, he would be afraid of making a mistake or making a lost choice. Whereas Marcia, this one down here on the left, this crazy woman, she's an artist and she loves it. Like I was like, let me show you how to dye. And then she just like went for it. She's like, give me some more pearls to dye. So just, um, you know, be aware of people's personalities they can help you, but then you're going to be able to delegate. Jennifer had done some accounting, so I was like, please, you know, do you know QuickBooks? Let's, let's learn about QuickBooks. And she's so good at it, and she um, she likes making all the numbers. Uh, what's that word when you make your bank match? Reconciling. Uh, reconciliation. See, that just makes me want to like, it just makes, oh, I just want to hide. Um, but she likes it, you know, so, well, she might not say she likes it sometimes, but. Um, so anyway, don't try to fit a person into something that they're not uh, not going to do. And at the same token, take advantage of someone's interests and talents. They, they might bring something to these people that you didn't even know you needed. So um, okay. Yeah, moving forward, you're going to need help between, so we have shipping, um, <coughs> packaging, production, education, bookkeeping, social media, website, um, all of these things. I can't, I could not, Serafina would not exist without the team that we have. It's not me. It's, we're five actually, we just, first, another person started today. So, um, there's a lot to do, and then the bigger you get, the more there is to do. So. Um, another important thing, I talked a little bit about the um, mistakes small business owners make and how to avoid them, standardization, very clear contracts, um, it's all, that's important stuff. So you can delegate and be comfortable 
with your interactions if you have everything clear. Like I know how I want things shipped, I know how I want things packaged, and I kind of take the time to teach each new person that, although I don't know how to ship anything. I know how I want them to be packaged, but I don't know how to use our new shipping system. Um, so that's pretty much, um, I think I pretty much covered everything that I set out to cover. I'm happy to answer any questions that I might be able to. Anybody have